right, so for this video, we're gonna do a central line blood draw through the uh, central venous access device with our triple lumen here. Um, some things that we need to have before we get ready to draw the blood, we need to have an order for it. So that's also gonna help us determine which tubes we need to draw. So you have many different colors of tubes. And on each tube, it'll tell you how much blood you need to draw. So like for this lavender one, for example, I need to do four mLs of blood. If I was doing a light green one, I'd have to do three mLs. So if I was drawing the lavender and the mint, I would have to have a total of seven mLs of blood when I draw the amount of blood that I need. For your totes, you have this red one. This is a 10 ml, so you would need to get 10 mLs of blood to fill this one up. So the supplies that you need for this, you're going to need an injection cap, because you're gonna change that at the end of the blood draw. You need a blood transfer device. You'll need two full syringes um, filled with saline and if you're using a simple connector like I'm going to use you're going to need the blunt tip cannulas on the end. You'll need an empty syringe as well. This is going to be for the sample and I have a blunt cannula for my to be able to access. You will need three to four alcohol swabs. You can use regular clean gloves. Um, and for this particular procedure, as far as lab goes, we're, um, we typically wouldn't require a mask to be worn for this. Um, but with the pandemic, obviously you'll have a mask on and that's probably the policy now in the facilities. Um, we also would want the okay to use the line. So if interventional radiology places the line we can go ahead and use it usually right away. If it's placed at the bedside, they wanna make sure that it's in the right place. So they'll get a chest X-ray. They wanna make sure that the very end of the catheter is sitting right above the right atrium in the severe, superior vena cava. Um, and then we have, it's okay to use, so we can draw blood, we can give IV fluids, we can give medications through it. Um, we also want to inspect our line and our site. So we wanna look at the site and look for any signs of infection, inflammation, phlebitis, infiltration, or extravasation. Um, you also want to look and make sure your lines don't have any cracks, um, bends, or any leaking going on. For your blood draws, you wanna know whatever your facility's policy is regarding the blood draw. Um, for us, we're requiring a flush before and a flush after. For a lot of facilities, they want you to flush with 20 mLs of saline after you have drawn your blood. So you wanna know that. You wanna know whether or not you have to do a cap change with every blood draw or not. Um, certain patient populations, it's too much of an increase of risk for infection for, you, for us to constantly be changing the caps out um, every time we do a blood draw because we do them so frequently. Um, and then also following your facility's guidelines for which test tubes you need and how it aligns with your blood draw. So typically a light blue we will use for coagulation studies to see how the blood is clotting. Um, we could use the mint green one for electrolytes. The lavender one is usually for complete blood counts to look at white blood cells and platelets and stuff. Uh, the yellow can also be used for certain electrolytes and then also liver and thyroid specific studies. And then the pink one, we would use it for a type and screen for to determine blood type. Um, so you wanna look at those and be able to determine what you need based upon whatever your order is. So we, um, for the actual procedure, since I went through everything that we need and talked about the test tubes, 
for as far as positioning for your patient goes, we can do a 30 degree angle and that's perfectly fine. Um, they don't necessarily have to have their head turned to the side or anything, but sometimes if you're having a little bit of difficulty getting the blood to come back briskly, um, sometimes we might need to have them turn their head to the side. Maybe we might have to have them raise their arm. It just depends. Sometimes these lines can get a little bit finicky. Um, of course, we would never want to exude ex additional pressure when we're flushing the lines and we don't want to do excessive pulling um, to try to get blood return on them. So if we're doing gently and we're not getting a result, then there might be something else going on with the line. For your actual procedure, we have our order and I'm gonna use the same one that you guys have in your totes, which is this red topper. And we'll say that they ordered electrolyte panel for our patient um, to be drawn through the central line. So we have our orders, we have all of our supplies, we did hand hygiene. We've got our patient positioned in a proper position. And we're going to select the distal lumen um, you always want to inspect your lines when you're looking at them to look for any kinks or breaks or leaking. Your lines will be uh, labeled. So we have a proximal, a middle, and a distal lumen. And if you need to refresh on that a little bit, you can go back to the CVAD IV medication administration video. Um, so this also tells you the gauges. So the proximal and the middle are 18 gauge and the distal is a 16 gauge, which means it's bigger. The 16 gauge is bigger. The smaller the number, the bigger the gauge for IV. Um, and we're gonna hopefully get adequate blood return with that. So we've got everything ready to go there. I am going to get my flush ready alcohol. Patients should not have any complaints of pain when you're doing this. So I'm going to select my distal lumen. I have it clamped and I'm going to scrub for 15 seconds. So you'll notice all three of these are clamped. That's because we don't have any fluids or anything running through them. If you did have something running, you would want to pause for at least a minute uh, as long as the patient is stable and clamp your lines, and then you'll be able to do your blood draw. So after the 15 second scrub, we allow it to dry. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any bubbles in my syringe. And the simple connector, so I have the blunt cannula. I am going to pull back, and I wanna see nice brisk blood return. I get the blood return and I can go ahead and gently flush with 10 mLs. And then I'm going to pull back a minimum. Uh, the Elsevier says 6 mLs. Typically, we put in, uh, remove what we flush. but for the Elsevier video purposes, it says a minimum of six mLs. I decided to do 10 because I put the 10 in. This will go into the sharps for discarding. I have it clamped before I removed my syringe and then I'm gonna scrub again for 15 seconds. And if at any point I drop this, I need to get a new alcohol and re-clean for 15 seconds again. I'm taking my empty syringe and putting my blunt cannula on there so that I can access this. It's dry. Attaching my syringe. 
My test tube said I needed 10 mLs. So I'm gonna gently pull back 10 mLs. And you can see we want it to be brisk and a nice, easy, gentle pull. We don't wanna use excessive force when we're pulling blood. If we're having a difficulty, then there's probably something wrong with the line. Detach. I'm going to get my blood transfer device ready, switch this over, and I'm going to set that to the side for a minute on my test tube. And then we will transfer it. And it's a vacutainer, so the vacuum of it is going to pull the blood down into the tube. So you can see it's filling on its own. And it will stop when the um, the negative pressure is gone. Okay. That would go into sharps. This I'm going to put the patient's label on um, and then my date, time, and initials on there. Again, follow whatever your facility's policy is. Um, you may have paperwork that you have to send down with this as well and you want to put it in a, a biohazard bag to be sent to lab. You would want to note whether or not um, the lab needs to be sent as an example. Sometimes we have to send a lab. It has to be delivered on ice within 30 minutes to the lab. So we would want to know that as far as special instructions go for our labs. And then the last process of this is I'm going to open my injection cap and attach my blunt tip there. And I'm going to flush to get the air out. Again, I still have this clamped, and I'm going to remove the old injection cap, and I'm going to clean for 15 seconds. So you don't ever want to leave these unclamped in between because what's going to happen? You're going to have air going into the patient very bad, and you're going to have blood coming out a mess. So make sure you have it clamped in between. Get the full 15 second scrub. And then let it dry and then you can put your new injection cap on there. Unclamp and slowly flush until you've got the full 10. And if your facility calls for 20, you would re-clean and with a new syringe you would do the additional 10 on top of that. And so then I have everything labeled. Maybe I had to have a second person co-sign with me that they uh, double checked the vial for me and I'm sending it off to the lab.